Father God, once again, we come into your presence thanking you for your word, thanking you for the chance for us to, the, 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 the opportunity for us to be together. We ask that you speak to us this morning. God, I thank you that I hear your voice. I thank you that I follow your voice, and I thank you that, that, I, that I speak for you this morning, and you change our hearts, God. Change our hearts, change our lives, encourage us, uh, encourage us. I pray that the word builds us up and edifies us today so we can make the changes we need to make in ourselves to be effective in what you would have us do. And I thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, if you, if you didn't notice, pastor's not here. Um, so they send the cheerleader in. You know, coach is gone, so it's, they send the cheerleader in, I guess. And I'm, you know, hey, if, you, if it's been a tough week, that's okay. You drug yourself in here on this rainy Sunday morning. We're going to pump you up. We're going to get you all excited. We're going to fill you full some more word. And you're going to walk out this week, and you're going to kick the devil in his teeth. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. So I'm just here to say, sis, boom, ba. <laughs> Woohoo! Go team. We got this thing. We're going to do it. Amen. There's a mantra. I mean, it's, we, we, hopefully, what we need to be doing is, in our faith, growing, and then fighting. And when the fight's over, we need to grow a little more, and we need to fight again. And we need to grow, and we need to fight, and we need to grow, and we need to fight, and we need to grow, and we need to fight, and then we need to repeat that process. Grow, fight, grow, fight, grow, fight. That's what we've got to do. Hey, Jesus expected us to grow in our faith to use our faith. God himself expects us to use our faith and grow, grow our faith. And ha hey, I, I understand. How, how frustrating is it? I've, I've, been, I've been here. You know, I, I live where you live. When you're trusting God and you're believing God and it doesn't seem like God, you said... God, you, you said, you said, why not? God, why, 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 right? And sometimes we start that wondering, that questioning, and we get over into that, that double-minded, right, place we don't want to be. But I understand that can happen to us. If we don't keep our guard up, there's nothing more frustrating, I believe, in our Christian life than fighting the good fight of faith and feeling like I'm not doing a very good job fighting, using my faith to get done what we need to get done. And I would, I would say to you, there are times in your life and in our lives and corporately in our life when we don't do a good enough job nurturing and growing our faith and using our faith. Because the authority and the power we've been given is amazing. And we have got to get to the place to where we are operating and using our faith. It's up to us, saints of God. It's up to us. And there, I, I know there are times when we feel like, man, oh man. Man, oh man. God, what about this? And we're going to address some of that this morning. I want to talk about effective faith this morning. Because it's, it's important to God that we're able to use our faith. If you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 15. We're going to read verses 7 and 8. If you abide in me, now this is Jesus. This is red letters, right? If you have one of them red letter Bibles, it's important. It's Jesus talking. I'm not saying, you know, none of the Bibles, you know, none of it's not, not important. But this is Jesus, you understand, right? The master, our master, the leader of the church, said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it will be done for you. My, my father that is glorified in this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Now he's talking to the disciples, and he's saying to them, listen, guys, listen, listen. Here's, here's what needs to happen. You need to abide in me, live in me, have your very being in me, take your strength from me, and my words need to abide in you. And there is, there's a connotation of an endless time frame with these words. These words, Jesus' words. You know, Jesus didn't have Romans 10. 
He wasn't reading Paul's letter. Faith comes from hearing, and hearing by the word of God. He just knew this, right? He's good like that. He just knew this stuff. He didn't, he didn't need to be taught this. But he knew the disciples did. And so he's saying to them, okay, now boys, listen to me. You have got to abide in me, and my words have got to abide in you. Because Jesus knew that if his words abided in them, their faith would be grown. And if they listened to him, they would continue to walk in love. And so if you're walking in love and you're watching your love walk and the words concerning Christ are ringing in your ear and you're speaking them and talking about them and meditating on them all the time, your faith is going to get grown. It's going to get bigger and bigger. And how do you know your faith is effective? When you use it and it works. Hey, listen, I don't, I don't mean to be mean, but I know in my own life, and by the way, all of this, anything that I say, I've learned this from my own life. And some of it I'm learning. Today, I'm learning from my own life. I mean, I'm not, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not nearly as good as I'm going to be. I'm not nearly as, 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 as advanced as I need to be in the things of God. But I'm a whole lot farther than I used to be. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for your grace. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And I don't know much. I'll, I'll admit that. I, I don't know much. And if you've been sitting under this man... For any length of time, you probably know everything I know. I mean, he gets, he gets up here week after week, three times a week, and preaches and teaches faith and flows in the Spirit. <laughs> so how much pressure does that put on me when he says, do you want to fill in Sunday morning? <laughs> and, you know, he doesn't let just anyone, you know, it's, think of the, the ministers we've had come through here. I mean, b big names, highly anointed people. So it puts a lot of pressure on a little guy like me. <laughs> and I'm just saying, hey, Jesus expects us to grow and use our faith. And understand this, you know, I, and I think the word of faith in quotes, sect or whatever we want to call it, and, you know, people get off on that, that ultra hyper prosperity. Remember years ago how everything was, you know, believe God for a Mercedes and the million bucks and blah, blah, all of that. Hey, listen, go, we know that God wants to bless us, right? We, we know that he does. And what does it say in the Old Testament? That, that God has given you the power to get wealth. Why? Yeah, to establish his covenant on the earth. So... A lot of times I think we, we stop short and we start thinking about, God, I thank you not only for meeting my needs but making me prosperous. But we don't, we don't take it a step farther and say, thank you for making me prosperous so I can be a blessing to the church, so I can watch the kingdom of God advance, so we can build a new church building. I thank you for excess in my life. And if I have to keep driving the same old car, I will. But I thank you that I got extra money that I'm funneling into the kingdom of God. Well, see, we, sometimes we don't talk like that, right? Some, right. I mean, sometimes we don't. But that's why God gives us the, the, the ability to get wealth. And Jesus, can you hear it in his voice? He wants these guys to grow their faith. And he's saying to them, li listen to me. In essence, I'm not going to be around forever. I'm not going to be here. And this work has got to get done. Boys, it's up to you. It, it's up to you. you. I'm going to be gone, and you've got to do this. You have got to do this. My words have got to abide in you. He knew that if his words abided in them, that their faith would grow, and they would be effective, and they would be able to do the things that God had called them to do. It's important to God, and I'll prove it to you. Read, turn to Matthew chapter 6. Sorry, 16. And we're going to read verses 5 through 12. We're going to read a bunch of familiar scriptures this morning. Is that okay? Good. <laughs> you said no, I would have been in trouble. This is what I got. Matthew 16, 5. 
And the disciples came to the other side of the sea, but they had forgotten to bring any bread. And Jesus said to them, Watch out and beware of the leavened bread of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they began to discuss this among themselves, saying that, we, that because we did not bring any bread, but Jesus, aware of this, said, You men of little faith, why do you discuss among yourselves that you have no bread? Do you not yet understand? Or remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets you full you picked up, or the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many large baskets full you picked up? How is it that you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread? But be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And then they understood that they did not say to be aware of the leavened bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Love the disciples. Until these boys got the Holy Spirit, they're just walking around, they're bumbling around. Man, they love Jesus. They give their life for Jesus. They knew he was the Son of God. And they're traveling with him, and they love being in the ministry, and, but they, there's so much stuff they didn't get. Can you imagine this, this scenario? They get to where they're going, and Jesus said, by the way, we're coming into something, and the Pharisees and Sadducees have the teaching that you don't need to be listening to. And he referred to it as, un, as leaven. You know, they ate their, their unleavened bread. This had leaven in it. So he's saying to them, avoid the teaching. Well, the disciples see these guys standing around, and all of a sudden Peter's like, oh, dude, are you kidding me? John, John, you didn't bring the bread. That's why he said the thing about the Pharisees and the leaven, because we didn't bring the bread. You were supposed to bring, I wasn't going to bring the bread. I did, I, the bread is not my job. Levi is supposed to bring the bread. And they get into this whole conversation like, oh, dude, we don't have any bread. Oh, my gosh, what are we going to do now? There's no bread. And Jesus, is he, I, in my mind, he's rolling his eyes. Oh. And that's when he goes into the, are, are you kidding? I'm not, I'm not worried about bread. Boys, are you listening? Are you with me? <laughs> I need you to get this. God is concerned that your faith grows and you use it. There's work to be done. We have a responsibility to get this done. Let's read another one of these stories. Let's go to Mark chapter 4, verse 35, and we're going to go through 40. On that day, when evening came, he said to them, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took him along with the boat, and just as he was, and other boats were before him. And there, he, and there arose a forced gale of wind, and the waves were breaking over the boat so much that the boat was already filling up. Jesus himself was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, be still. And the wind died down, and it became perfectly calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Can, can you see or sense this almost urgency in Jesus? He's leaving the earth. And the ministry is left in these guys' hands. And he's saying, you, you have seen enough. You've heard enough teaching. You've heard the word. You hear it preached three times a week. Why are you coming to get me when the boat's sinking? Stand up. Someone stand up and take, it, take authority over this. I've given you authority. Guys, I'm not going to be here. Can, can you hear this in his voice? It's important to God that you grow your faith. It's important to God that you use your faith. Go to Matthew 17. These are all cute little stories a lot of times when we read them until we read them and think, hmm. oh, he's talking to me like that. <laughs> You still with me, though? All right, just checking. All right, Matthew 17, 14 through 20. You there, Matthew? All right. Every time we turn to a scripture in teen church, I say, all right, turn to Matthew 17, 14 through 20. Got it? I mean, it's that fast every time. I didn't hear it, so I didn't feel like I could go on. 
When they came to the crowd, a man came up to Jesus, falling on his knees before him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and very ill. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Hmm. Went right to their boss. <laughs> this is their job, right? They're traveling with the master. I have given unto you all authority, tread upon serpents and scorpions, over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall any, by any means hurt you. Uh, Jesus, my son has got a devil. And he gets all crazy and throws himself into the fire and throws himself into the water and tries to drown himself. And I took him to your disciples because I knew that if I took him to your disciples, in your name they'd be able to do something. They couldn't cure him. So what does Jesus say? Not... It's not like, well, hey, get, cut them some slack. You know, they're just coming up in the things of God. They're just learning this stuff. You know, hey, 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 back off. D don't mess with my disciples. No, what he said was, you unbelieving and perverted generation, how long will I be with you? How long will I put up with you? Bring them to me. <laughs> well, that doesn't sound very loving, Jesus. <laughs> I thought you were, you know, love and... The, where's the lamb and the little child on your lap? No, Jesus had something to do. And he was expecting these guys to pick it up and march when he was gone. He knew what was happening. And he cracked. He couldn't take it anymore. You know, hypothetically, he gets in that situation, maybe not even hypothetically. I mean, what did he say? How long? How long? Wicked and perverted generation, how long will I be with you? There is a sense of urgency in the master's voice. And saints of God, I'm telling you, that sense of urgency hasn't left. We need, we need to do what's necessary to let the words of Jesus abide in us, and we need to abide in him. We've got to get to a place to where we, we, we feel like we can grow our faith to the point that we can use it. We can't rely on pastor all of our lives. And hey, you, you got something going on in your life? Pick up the phone and call that man. He'll pray with you. He'll pray for you. He's done it with me over and over. You got a prayer request? You bring it to the church. You need healing in your body? You need to be sliding into the altar up here like, you know, someone sliding into home base. The man is anointed. He's called. We're in the right place to do, to do exactly what we're doing. But I'm telling you, it's time that we, we step up our game. I know it's time for Greg. The Greg steps up his game. And I, I, I plan on doing it. Because there's an urgency that I sense right from the throne room of heaven that we need to, we need to pick it up. No one's going to do this for us. You understand? No one is going to do this for us. We need to do this. Amen. And then the disciples came privately to Jesus and said, why could we not drive it out? And he said to them, because of the littleness of your faith. <laughs> For truly I say to you that if you have the faith even as the size of a mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. And you understand, he didn't put any qualifiers on that. I mean, he didn't, there is no, if you're a born-again Christian and you say to this mountain, if you're filled with the Spirit and you've been praying in the Spirit for a good seven, eight hours straight and you say to this mountain, if you go to church and you've done all the right things and you're involved in ministry, then if you believe, you say to this mountain, no, there are two requirements. We've got to believe and we've got to speak. We have to believe and we have to speak. And on the surface, we look at it and say, it, it's not much to ask, <laughs> Right? All we got to do is we got to believe and we got to speak and nothing will be impossible to us. And I know that there are times when you're in a fight. 
Paul, Paul called this a fight. He said, it's a, you fight the good fight of faith. And it's a fight. And I think part of our problem sometimes is we expect the fight to be over immediately. I don't know about you, but I've never had one of them immediate over fights. If you have, glory to Jesus, I'm happy for you. I'm not going to say I'm a little envious, but there's something going on there that I need to deal with. And you hear preachers stand up and talk about suddenlies, right? I was, you know, $150,000 in debt, and I was praying one night, and I woke up the next morning, and suddenly I had a million dollars in my bank, and I'm thinking, that's fantastic. That's... How, do I, how do I get to suddenly? Right? I'm a, I love the idea of a suddenly. And suddenlies happen. You can't say they don't. They do. We've heard stories. I've seen it over and over and over. I've not had a suddenly. I've had a, we're going to spend some time praying, and we're going to spend some time fighting, and you're going to fight the devil, and you're going to overcome this joker. And we come out victorious on top, feeling like, all right, I told you. I told you I'm coming through that. But with me, in my experience, you got to fight the fight. Everything in my life, I've had, we've had to fight the fight. There have been times in my life when I thought I was living by faith and I wasn't. There have been times in my life when I was making more money than I knew what to do with. And you feel like because you're giving and you're obedient and you're giving, and I believe I was. You feel like, look me, I'm living by faith, and I wasn't. I, I had faith, I had faith in my job and my ability to sell. It wasn't like I was believing God for, you know, to meet my needs. But if you asked me if I was, I would have told you yes. There's nothing, there's nothing like living by faith to grow your faith. Do you understand what I mean by that? There's nothing like you, you've got to trust God for this situation. Because if, if, if God doesn't come through, it's not going to happen. There's nothing that will grow your faith like that. And if you're, in a, if you're in a situation today, a unique situation, that everything in your life is just right on track. You know, I don't, I guess I don't have to believe God for anything. Family's good, kids are healthy, everything's good, got money in the bank. I hear God's voice clearly, he moves in my life, I move in the spirit. Well, you spend time, spend time in the word, spend time praying in the spirit, because the devil's coming after you. I'm telling you, he hates you. I tell this to the teens every week, he hates you. Teens, do I do this every week? Every, he hates you. And he's coming after you. And if you're not feeling it right now, that's okay. Rejoice. Be glad. Because he hates you and he's coming after you. And by the way, he doesn't hate you because you're so good looking. You know? He's not like jealous of you. Do you know why God hates you? Or God, far, sorry, Father. Do you know why the devil hates you so much? Stop laughing, Josh. The devil hates you so much because God is so in love with you. God is so, he looks over, you know, the hypothetical banister of heaven, and he looks, and he's like, oh, God, that's my girl. <laughs> Look at that. I, I love her. And the accuser of the brethren, right up in his ear saying, she's not even living for you. She doesn't even love you. Look at what she's doing. How do you, how can you talk, how are you, who, she, are you kidding? She's nothing. And God says, yeah, she's going through stuff, but she's not always going to be there. I'm just so proud of her. And we don't get it. We don't understand that if we're not living to a certain level and we're not doing the right things and saying the right things, that God doesn't love us. He does. And this is a whole different sermon. We're not preaching right now. But you have to understand that, but to make the point, God loves you. I mean, painfully, a heart-wrenching love for you. And when he sees the devil come against you and hurt you, it breaks his heart. And this is the only way that the devil can get to God. Why does the devil hate you and want to hurt you and want to see you completely trash your life? Walk away from the things of God? Live in lack and poverty and sickness? Because it's an affront against God. And God, Jesus, gave us the authority over the devil. He told us how, how we can grow our faith. How we can stand up and not take this stuff. We, it's time we do it. If the work of the ministry that Jesus started is going to be completed today, it's not going to be completed in our own strength. Someone say, okay, yeah. 
This is only going to happen by us activating our faith. If, if we're going to receive anything from God, we're going to receive it by faith. Do you understand that? In heaven, you get to heaven, you're still going to have to use your faith. You'll still, it's a spiritual principle, you'll still receive the things from God the same way. There just won't be any resistance to it. The devil's not going to be there. You're just going to believe God and it's going to happen. But right now, while we're on the, this earth, the devil's going to fight you every step he can. He doesn't want you to be effective for God, and he certainly wants to do anything he can to hurt you. <laughs> it's not much of a cheerleader sermon, is it? <laughs> it actually didn't go the, exactly the, the way that I thought it was going to. All right, but so what we need to do then, what we need to talk about is where we need to get to to effectively grow our faith, right? Then let's do it. Then let's do it. Let, let, let's do it, because we can. The, hey, saints, the good news is, it, it's not just like this elect that get to live by faith and grow their faith. Every single one of us can. We can. We have to start small. And we've got to stop trying to ride on the faith of, for example, pastor, our spiritual father. Because this man lives by faith. And it's easy to feel like I'm going to a Word of Faith church and I hear pastor. I'm going through a hard time. That's okay. Pastor will pray for me. And I'm, I'm going to say something else too. Growing up in a church like this, where you hear the Word over and over and over, it's easy, you know this is true, it's easy to fall into the trap of, I know that. I, I, I know that. I know that God can do that. I know that God can do that. I know. I know God heals. Mm -hmm. I know God delivers. I know God wants me to live financially free. I know that. But there's a big difference between knowing it and actually knowing it. There's a difference, saints, between being in hope and being in faith. And we can know intellectually everything that we need to know and know that God is going to. God is going to. And we can say, God, I thank you that you're going to. And we can say the right words. But, you know, you, how many know, knows that God looks at the heart? Man is moved by outward appearance, King says. That whole story with Jesse. But God looks on the heart. And so we can fool our friends. If I, I probably can't fool Jerry, but if I try real hard, I might be able to get something past him. But I can start that whole, you know, we start that church talk. How you doing, brother? Blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And on the inside, I'm thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? How am I ever going to get out of this? How is God going to do this? The reason that happens is, are you ready? We're not doing what we need to do. And I'm telling you, listen, it's not hard. It's work. It takes time. But it's not like digging ditches. Your back's not going to be all sore at the end of the day. There's just things that we need to do. And so we need to do these things. Saints, we need to do these things. We need to do them for ourselves. We need to do them for our family. And we need to do them to, to complete the work that God has put us on the earth to do. We've got to do this stuff. We've got to do it. What is, let, let's turn to, let's see where I am. Ephesians 5.1. You don't even have to turn there. Ephesians 5.1 tells us, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. Imitate God, imitate God, imitate God. When Jesus was on the earth, what did he say? I do what I see my father do. And I say what I hear my father say. So if we want to know what, and I'm sorry I'm spitting, I apologize. I know that I can, <laughs> I can see, I know it's, thank God the front row is, I'm, you're safe. I'll try not to apologize. Um, so if we want to know how to imitate God, all we have to do is look at Jesus. And we got, a, we have books 
full of what Jesus did. We've got the Gospels to start with, but things that Jesus did are referenced throughout the Bible. But there's one scripture that I want to read to you that you're, I know you're very familiar with as well, but we need to read this. Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Got it, Matthew? All right, just checking. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. And the tempter came to him and said, If you're the Son of God, command these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Men shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you're the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. And on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, on the other hand, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, go, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And the devil left him. And behold, angels came and began to minister to him. Guys, it's our responsibility to follow Jesus. If we don't know what to do or exactly what to do in a situation, we need to do what we're supposed to do. And we know this, that faith comes from hearing, and, and hearing from what? The word of God. Another translation that I like says, faith comes from hearing and hearing the words concerning Christ. Galatians 6.9 says, let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we'll reap if we do not grow weary. In due time we'll reap if we do not grow weary. And James 4, 7 says, Submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. understand how easy it is to lose heart. When you're standing and you're believing God and you're fighting, you're doing your best to believe God and you're fighting and the fight never seems to end. It seems like, dear Jesus, and just now, and now this, God, I thank you. Father God, I thank you for delivering me. I thank you, God. I thank you. And you quote the scripture, and it's easy to get weary. Let us not lose heart in doing good. And that encompasses a lot of things, too. There's a lot of good that we can do. But how many, for the purpose of this discussion today, would at least agree that spending the time to build our faith and speaking back to the devil to get him off and out of our lives and our family's life and our church's life is doing good. Can we agree with that? So at least for today, I'm going to encourage you and say, don't grow weary in doing good. And the temptation is going to be to grow weary because the devil is fighting you. And he's going to keep fighting you. And the book says, resist the devil, and he will flee. And unfortunately, there's not a timeline there. And the devil will whisper in your ear, are you kidding me? It's been a year. It's been two years. It's been three years you've been believing God to get you out of this mess. You've been quoting these stupid scriptures for three and a half years. You've been talking back to me for three years, and nothing's happened. <laughs> and this is the way people talk to you. Okay? He's a liar. He's a, he's a liar. Because the key is, if we keep resisting, he'll flee. The problem is, we do get weary, and we do stop resisting. And when we stop resisting, we give him another toehold, and we've got to start resisting all over again. So I'm encouraging you. Resist. He's coming after you, so resist him. Stop him. Keep yourself built up. Continue. Keep quoting scriptures over and over and over. This is like back to the basics, back to the beginning. But you've got to do this. This is what's going to grow you. This is spiritual warfare. This is spiritual warfare. So 
spending the time on your knees, getting the scripture on the inside of you, talking back to the devil, watching your spirit man grow, and all of a sudden you become like that. I don't think the team's at 200 pound canary going, hey, kitty, 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 kitty. I'm going to eat someone for lunch. Come on, devil! Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for you. But it doesn't, it doesn't just happen. It can't just happen. It didn't just happen for Jesus. It didn't happen for the disciples. But Jesus was concerned about them. How long am I going to be with you? I mean, I, it's like almost there's no panic. Like, oh, man, you guys have got to get this stuff. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you'll ask whatever you will. He's like, boys, you got to get this. If you ask me anything, it's going to it's be done. This is the key. It's going to be done. If you ask me anything, it's going to be done. I'm going to do it. You have got to abide in me, and my words have got to abide in you. These are the two requirements. Because if his words abide in you, when you start speaking, you will believe it. Supernaturally, spiritually, stuff that you couldn't believe on your own, your spirit will start to believe it. And when you start to believe it, you'll start to speak it. You'll start making your request known to God, and the stuff is going to start happening. You'll stand up to the devil, and the devil's going to say to you, when we see you, I'll tell you, you'll be walking down the street, you'll be praying, and they'll be dead. And I, I'm one of these, I do believe that there's a demon behind every bush. I mean, and the buyer, there's two behind some. You know, I mean, it's, I'm sure of it. You walk down the street, and you want the, you want the demons like, no, don't, 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 don't mess with the demons. <laughs> you just can't even imagine how it's angry. What happened to angry the other time he tried to attack him? He got squished. But we have this authority. We have this power. This is what we've been given. It's not a joke. We've been given this. But if we don't use it, if we don't activate it on our own, it's not going to happen. This is why, by the way, are we okay? Okay. I have this thing with Cameron, too, in the team church. I, we, we can be going. I can be like, all right, this is fantastic. I'm going to feel great. And all of a sudden, Cameron will give me one of these. I'm like, oh, all right, we're done. Thank you, Father God, for the word. Wait, I don't, the last thing I want to do is just keep talking when it's just me talking and everyone's like, okay, we got it. A while ago. You didn't know what I was going to say? I just told the pastor. That's the anointing that I get from my pastor. Yeah, we're getting close. I sure was. It was going to be really good. See what you get when you don't follow your specific yourself. All right. I guess what I, what, the, the point that I want to make to that quote, I know it's in my past. I, I know I have in the past, but you'll be glad to find it. You're looking at me like I'm not sure, but then you will. Right. <laughs> this is why so many teachings, and not just today, going way back, were more popular than this. The word of faith teaching. The power and the authority that we learn, that we are, we're put in touch with, supersedes everything. The problem is, it's up to us. God's Word always works. So if something isn't working, here's what we hate. I only have me to blame. And that's a terrible place to live. Personal responsibility. Oh, no. You know, when I go to the gym and I open my, my, my locker and I've got that combination that's three numbers long, I don't put two in and then shake the lock and when it doesn't open, say, lock doesn't work. No, I'm not doing everything I need to do to open the lock. It's the same thing. And by the way, living by faith, th- there's a lot to this. I mean, you, you go to this church, you know it. I mean, there's, there's, we got you know, we check our love walk. We got to be quick to forgive others. We got to be building our spirit, man. We, I mean, there's, there's a lot to walking and living by faith. A lot to growing our faith. But it comes down to us. 
we can be that supernatural, you know, giant slaying Christian that the devil is afraid of, but we've got to build ourselves up to it. And it takes time. There's no other way around it. We've got to take the time to do it. If you won't take the time, it's not going to happen. And if it hasn't happened yet, I'm sorry, but you haven't taken enough time. And let me just say, I haven't yet taken enough time to get to where I want to be. I'm not standing up here like, watch me, I'm up. I'm going to step out here and not even hit the ground. I mean, I'm not not going to do that anyway. <laughs> sorry about that. That was a terrible analogy. <laughs> But I, I say that to say, I'm not, I'm not saying that, that I'm where I need to be, but I do know that I'm headed to where I need to be. And I encourage you to head to that same place. The problem with, with the word of faith is, and, and everything that, that spiritually comes from God, although it's a gift from God, we have to reach out and take it. There's a personal responsibility. We've got to do it. And if we don't take it, we don't get it. But why do you think, like, we always talk about, um, you know, the, the, the sovereignty of God, those guys, and whatever will be, will be. God is sovereign. Whatever happens, is going to happen. It's God's will. Well, yeah, of course that's easy to believe. I don't have to do anything. I, if I go out and sin tonight, it's God's will. No wonder that's not, that's not, not too, you know, or that's easy to imagine going out and prophesying for that. The whole hyper-grace movement, we call it the hyper-grace movement, and it's, you know, it's, I think that a lot of those guys that are, you know, preaching grace and hyper grace and all that kind of stuff, they're not any different than some of us were in the Word of Faith movement years ago, talking about money and prosperity. They're getting off somewhere. Do we need to do? We need to pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them every day. Father God, if the wrong changed their heart, I thank for changing them, God. You know, you start grumbling against the man of God because he's anointed. What will happen to you? You'll die in the wilderness. How about that? The children of Israel did. Let's just be careful. Let's, you know, I, I, I don't care what anyone's preaching out there. I really don't. I don't care. I mean, I just, I don't care. I listen to my pastor, and I read my Bible, and I do what I see what's in the book, and that's what I try to learn. And I don't care about all the goofy stuff that's out there. But I will tell you, there's stuff that's out, that's out there. I understand the attraction. You know, back in the day, in, when Paul was writing to the church of Corinth, listen to this. The church of Corinth, you go to the temple to have relations with the priests or the priestesses, and this is how you, you, how you connected with God. Well, now, if you're out trying to get sinners into church, would you rather preach that or be saying what Jesus said? The world hated me. They're going to hate you. I was persecuted. You're going to be persecuted. Pick up your cross and follow me. <laughs> hey, there's a responsibility that we have got to do. Forgetting everything else to decide, we have got to pick up our cross and follow Jesus every day. Abide in Him and let your word, let His word abide in you. And we will get to where we need to be. And we've got to do it. And we've got to do it every day. There's, there's, no, there's no way around it. So that's my words of encouragement this morning. I, I just think I, I do. I understand. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes we get, we get exhausted. We get tired. We, we do get weary in well doing. Sometimes we have to look to our Father. Hey, Jesus needed those five words of affirmation. John baptized him, and the heavens opened up, and the Holy Spirit ascended as a dove. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. Jesus needed to hear that. We do too sometimes. And we need a lot of times for that refreshing. From our Father, we need the refreshing from the Holy Spirit. What's that? Hang on a second. I knew I brought up the backup for a reason. Because what happens if the electronic one doesn't turn on? I always freak out of it. Oh, it blew up on it, right, Jeff? Here it is. Therefore, 
Repent and return, so that your sins may be wiped away, in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Repent and return, so that your sins may be wiped away, in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. I feel like maybe that today we need to be in that place. When we're coming to the realization that I need to do better, I'm going to do better. I'm going to be stronger. I'm going to be stronger for my church. I'm going to be stronger for my family. I'm going to be stronger for me. I'm going to be stronger for the man. I'm going to do the things that I need to do, but I still need a time of refreshing in my life. Now, I'm going to ask you to do this. I'm going to ask you Take that time. You need to repent. Repent. Return to the thing that you know you need to return to. Enter into the time of refreshment. And then start your quest for the journey. Father God, I thank you for your word, and I just ask once again, God, that nothing that was spoken today is going to be misunderstood. I thank you that nothing is, nothing is confusing that was spoken. The devil can't come in and pull up any seed that was planted. And I just thank you, Father, that we have the ability to have this time with you and in your presence this morning, God. I thank you for these people. I thank you that they're anointed, they're called of you, they're blessed, they're prosperous. I thank you, God, that they they are giants. I thank you that their faith is large and it's growing daily. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, Saints. Well, you can ask Cameron. I could stand and talk for a few more minutes. Or hours. But I'm not going to. So I guess stand up. (laughs) 